Welcome everyone. Today we are going to learn how to log a user in with the Twitter API using PHP. By the end of this video, the user will hit our website. If they are not logged in with Twitter, they will see a login with Twitter link. Click on the link and it will take them to Twitter where it, Twitter will ask if they would like to authorize with our Twitter app. Here's my Twitter API with PHP app. I'm going to click authorize. This is going to take me back to my website and display me the user's info. From Twitter. From the Twitter API, I have received my profile image, my user, my location, Twitter handle, and when my user was created. Down below here, I have printing out the entire object I have received from Twitter. This is all of the info for the user once they log in and authenticate through our app. First thing we need to do is we need to create a Twitter app. We're going to head over to developer.twitter.com, log in, select the apps in this drop down here. I'm going to be using this Twitter API with PHP app I created. There's my app icon, which we saw when I authenticated. If you don't have any apps here, click Create App, fill out the form, and then your app will appear here. Click on Details. The key piece of the app details for logging a user in is the callback URL. This must be specified and this must be a valid URL. This is where Twitter will send the user after they click the authorize app button. If it doesn't match this callback URL, the user will not be able to authorize with your app. The other two pieces of information besides the callback URL will be the consumer API keys. These are required in our code in order to talk to the Twitter API and get a valid response. Now let's get to coding. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a config file. This config file is going to hold our app credentials. Like I just mentioned, our consumer key, our secret, and our callback. I'm going to copy the callback URL for my app, paste it right here. Then I'm going to do the same for the consumer secret and the consumer key. We have defined our consumer key, our consumer secret, and our callback. Each one of these defines has to match the app that you created. If it doesn't, the user will not be able to authenticate with your app. Once the config.php has been set up, we can move on to the index.php file. I'm going to copy this config file and I'm going to name it index. I'm going to open that one up. So we have our index file created. First thing we need to do is define our session. We're using sessions. We're going to store the, our access token in the session. So we need to define the session start. After that, we're going to require our config file. Now we have access to our credentials. Next, we need to require the Twitter login PHP helper. This helper can be found on GitHub. This is the helper we're going to be using. Twitter API login PHP. We're going to download this zip file, extract that file to our website directory alongside our config and index. There we go. We have the repository right here inside our website, Twitter login PHP directory. And we're going to want to include this auto load, which will load up everything in the source. So back to our index file, we're going to do a require. Now we've required our Twitter login PHP helper we got from GitHub. After the require, we need to define our use statement. Now we can create our if statements. I'm going to first set up the if statement blocks. The first if statement is going to be if we have an access token. If our session Twitter access token is already set, that means the user has already authorized our app. This else if right here is where the user will fall into if they are being redirected back from Twitter to our callback URL. That is the callback URL we specified in our app. When Twitter redirects the user to the callback URL, they append on a verifier and an auth token. From these two things, we will get an access token, which will allow us to get the user's info and log them in through Twitter. The else down here means the user has not been authorized with our app. And in that case, they will see the login with Twitter link. Now that we have our if else blocks set up, we can start writing the code that needs to go inside of each one of them. I'm going to start with the else. This is where the user has not been authorized and they need to click on the login link. The first line in this else is where we establish our Twitter OAuth connection and we pass in our consumer key and our consumer secret. So we have created a connection to the Twitter with OAuth. We're requesting an access token and we're going to save that token in the session. The session token will later be used in order to authenticate the user once they get redirected to our callback URL. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to set the is logged in equals to false. After this if else block, we're going to do a logged in check. 
This check is just going to check if the user is logged in or not. Since we're starting out at the not authorized, the user is not logged in. So we're going to be falling into this else down here. What this is doing right here is it's going to get us the URL that the user will be sent to based on our request token, which was generated up here in this else, else statement. Only thing left to do now is write a little bit of HTML and uh, display the link to that user. We're just going to do a simple href here and echo out that URL. So this link is going to take the user to the URL generated for us and let the user authorize with our app. So when the user has not been authorized with our app, they will fall into this else statement and we will get a request token. With that request token, we will generate a URL to send the user to and display that in an, an A tag, login with Twitter, and they will see this in the browser. They will see a login with Twitter URL link. You can style that up however you like. When we click on it, it'll take us to the authorization page where the user can authorize with our app. Now the next part we are going to quote up is once the user clicks on this authorize button right here, they will be sent to our callback URL and Twitter will append on a few Git variables. With those Git variables, we will generate an access token which will allow us to log the user in through the Twitter API. I'm gonna go back here, back to our login page, and then back to the code. So the next if else block we are falling into is going to be right here, coming from Twitter callback URL. The first thing we are going to do here is we are going to set up a connection to Twitter using our consumer key and our consumer secret, along with the session variables we saved down here when the user first got here. Those have been saved in the session so we can now access them once the user has been sent back to our website from the callback URL. Connection has been created with our consumer key, consumer secret, our session token, and our session secret that was set when the user first came to the page and saw the link. With that connection, we can now try to get an access token. The access token will use this connection right here, along with the get variables, the verifier and the token in the URL that Twitter has sent back, appended onto the callback URL. So our access token is generated using this connection right here, the access token endpoint, and the OAuth verifier, which was sent back, pended onto the callback URL. Once the access token has been received, we will save that to our session. After we set the access token, save it in the session, the user has been logged in. Once the user has been logged in, we fall into our is logged in if block. Here is where we're going to display the user info. In order to display the user info out to the browser, you need to start by setting up another connection. Our connection contains, again, our consumer key, our consumer secret, and now the Twitter access token that has been generated for us. We use the token and the token secret. From here, we can get the user info. This right here is the get request to Twitter API asking for the user's credentials. This right here is any extra parameters you might want, such as their email address. This is the if else block for the user object. We're gonna check if there's any errors, meaning we failed to get user info. If we fail to get user info, we're going to clear out the session variable and redirect them back to this index page. What that will do is we'll force the user back into our else statement right here, and they will have to reauthorize. Now, if we fall into this else statement, that means everything went well. We got the user info back, and we can display their info. First thing we're going to do is going to display their profile picture. After we display their profile image, we're going to display their username. For that, we're going to copy this a few more times and display their location, their Twitter handle, and the date they were created. 
So this is going to be the top half of our page where we have successfully authorized the user and we've gotten back their info. Under here is where I'm just going to print out some debug info. We're going to display the whole response from Twitter in a text area. Text area, print our user. So we will see the whole user object displayed in the text area. That's going to show us all the info we're able to display for the user. We're going to save that, head over to the browser. Now we're going to click on our authorize button. So we get to our page, we fall into the, our else statement. We're going to click on our link. We're going to get to our authorize page and we're going to click our authorize app button. You saw it briefly said redirecting. That part means it's redirecting back to our callback URL and appending on our get variables up here, which we then use to get an access token, get Twitter API with the user endpoint and get back the user's info. If all goes well, you will see the user info displayed here on the page. I got my picture, all my info, and we have down here the whole user info object dumped out into a text area. Perfect. Now we just have one if else block left to fill in. That is the easiest one yet. And that is this first if right here. So now that we've logged in, verified, and we have an access token, that means that our session Twitter access token is been set. All we have to do here is say is logged in equals true. And that's all there is to that if statement because we did most of the work right here when they first got verified. We set the access token and we set our Twitter access token in the session. I don't know if I could spell right, let's uh, add one more S on to the Twitter access token. So as I was saying in this else if here, when they got redirected back from Twitter, we created a connection, got the access token and set that in our session. Now, if we refresh our page, we will already have that access token in the session. So we just have to specify is logged in to true. We will bypass this whole if else block here and we'll fall right in here uh, where we will create our connection with our session Twitter access token, get our user info and display it out to the page. Back in the browser here, I can uh, refresh the page. We have fallen into the first if statement where all we did was set our is logged in variable equal to true because we already have generated an access token from Twitter. So we've displayed our user info out and dumped out the object right down here. That is how we log a user in with the Twitter API using PHP. That's gonna about wrap it up for this video, guys. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something and I'll catch you later.